What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out six WWE wrestlers fired immediately after a match. This should be interesting. I really want to see what wrestlers were just immediately let go by Vince. Like, yeah, you gotta get the hell up out of here, man. I don't know what the hell that was, but you're out of here. You're done. So I would love to see what matches, like who were, you know, involved in the matches. And um, I'm, I'm really interested to check this video out. I saw this in uh, in my uh, sub box and I was like, yeah, I, I definitely got to check this out with you guys just off the title alone. So I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 50K. Let's do this thing. Oh man. Now, there is a possibility that a superstar can have a match in WWE that irritates WWE Chairman Vince McMahon so much that he decides to fire them. Believe it or not, this does happen and has happened a number of times throughout WWE history. Now, the reason for the firings is always different. Sometimes a superstar can go off script and break PG guidelines and as a result, Vince has no choice but to let the superstar go. Or the superstar's opponent may just so happen to be one of the top stars in the company and that top star may complain about their opponent directly to Vince, resulting in Vince firing them on the mm. spot. But which wrestlers were they? Well, join us now as WrestleMania looks at six WWE sure superstars who were fired immediately after yeah, a match. To the original video be sure to subscribe and hit below. that notification Definitely bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Number six, Eugene. Oh, no, not Eugene. Eugene was one of the most controversial characters WWE had ever no. created. Eugene, in essence, was a superstar who had learning difficulties, and as a result, this made him a target. For not gonna lie to you, his character was, it really was bad, bro. They, they literally would use Eugene as a lot of, like, joke scenarios, and it's like, you couldn't do a character like Eugene now on television. They would get canceled. Like, you, you just couldn't. For WWE's heels, even though the presentation of the Eugene character has aged quite terribly, yeah. this didn't stop WWE in attempting to bring back the character in 2009. WWE would re sign Eugene with the aim of bringing him back to television once they found an appropriate storyline. The storyline they decided on was to book Eugene in a contract on a pole match versus the Calgary Kid, who would later be revealed to be The Miz. According to Eugene himself, Vince McMahon absolutely hated the way he looked in the match. Damn. Damn. Okay, listen up. He just hated. She hated the way he was looking in the match. That's a uh, damn from the the boss himself. Damn. Eugene stated that Vince had a major issue with his weight gain and that nobody is going to want to see fat old Eugene. And as a result, he was fired immediately after his match with the Miz. Wow. Number five, Kane Velasquez. Cain Velasquez's hmm. WWE career was a complete and utter disaster on all accounts. The issue started right after his debut night in WWE as Cain would interrupt Brock Lesnar following Lesnar defeating yep. Kofi Kingston to win the WWE title on the debut edition of SmackDown on yes. Fox. Remember this annoyed that. a lot of fans. This was, this I ain't gonna lie to you bro, they did Kofi wrong. They did him so wrong. His, his run literally didn't mean jack squat to WWE because they were really trying to promote, you know, SmackDown on Fox and they just killed everything he worked for. Like that, they, oh my, he, Kofi got squashed. I'm okay with Kofi losing to Brock. That's fine. What I'm not okay with is having Kofi get destroyed in the way he got destroyed. The match didn't even last that long he was done i'm like bro what, what what are you doing why why would you do that to oh man kofi deserved better he's oh he deserved better bro and who felt like fan favorite kofi was being pushed aside in favor of a kane versus brock feud yeah a feud which nobody wanted to see after all they had a real match in ufc so why would we want to see this yeah a kane would only have a total of one match during his wwe run and it was so underwhelming that wwe decided to never use him again following that match and would be released as part of 2020's budget cuts Kane would face Brock Lesnar at the Crown Jewel pay-per-view and it would last just over a minute before Kane tapped out. 
poor crowd reactions combined with a terribly received debut match gave them no choice in the matter. There were talks that the WWE may have brought Kane back for a Royal Rumble appearance, however there were reports at the time that Kane was rather vocal that WWE planned to do this, so they pulled any plans on bringing him back into the mix. Number 4 yeah. Kurt Angle a Kurt Angle is an interesting addition to this list. Yeah, as in the is. case of Angle, instead of being directly fired shortly following a match with Sabu on ECW in 2006, Angle went directly to Vince McMahon and requested that Vince fire him. Angle was in immense pain with nagging injuries. The release of Angle was a huge deal in 2006 as he was one of the WWE's top stars well, and naturally left true. a lot of fans disappointed who may not have known what was going on behind closed doors in relation to Angle's health. Vince actually released an official statement commenting on Angle's release back in 2006. He would state, It's unfortunate that Kurt was released and it's really unfortunate for the WWE fans who, for a while at least, won't see Angle in action. Angle is a consummate professional. Obviously he's a great athlete and he's the only Olympic gold medalist in WWE history. Mm -hmm. Not to have Kurt with us is really unfortunate all the way around, but circumstances were such that Kurt should have been and was granted his release. In relation to what Angle thought about his release, on his podcast he recently revealed, I was in bad shape. You know, I had a lot of injuries. At, at one particular time I had the neck injury, the shoulder, abdominal, I tore an abdominal muscle, Damn. a groin muscle, a hamstring. This is all at the same time. I was I was in really bad shape and the painkiller problem wasn't getting any better. So I was in a I was in a state of turmoil and Damn. even my relationship with Vince started dwindling and it was getting more erratic and I was, you know, uh, calling him, leaving him messages with threats and uh, just I just fell out of control. I was in a bad point in my life. Number three. Wow. That's wow, bro. I did not realize Kurt was going through so much. Like, yo, man, Kurt, shout out to Kurt Angle for just enduring that just to still entertain us wrestling fans at that time, man. Like, I think that is a good thing that he did leave, you know. He he did get a chance to fix himself up because, yo, that that's a recipe for disaster. So, hey, shout out to Kurt for being aware, like, hey, I, I may need to step away from this. And then, of course, the Mr. Kennedy situation. This is, uh, this is one of those situations. Yeah, I know about Mr. Kennedy being released. Uh, yeah, and Mr. Kennedy, he he was gaining some steam, but yeah, we're we're gonna. For those who don't know, you'll find out soon enough in this video. Mr. Kennedy. During a WWE house show in summer of 2008, Mr. Kennedy dislocated his shoulder in a match against Shelton Benjamin. This would put Kennedy out of action for a total of 10 months, Ooh. and Kennedy would make his huge return in May of 2009 as part of a 10-man tag team. This just so happened to be Kennedy's last match ever for the WWE. In the match, he would flub a back suplex on Randy Orton, and this absolutely enraged Orton, mm -hmm. who proceeded to complain to WWE management yep. immediately after the match, claiming that Kennedy was unsafe and that he didn't want to work with him. Kennedy would state in 2009 that Randy jumped really, really hard. In wrestling, it's give and take. It was a matter of either I drop him on his head or I help him through this. His neck never even touched the mat, which makes me wonder why he even went to the trainer's room to get his neck taped up. He was so injured that he went on to wrestle three nights in Mexico. Kennedy's comments once again enraged Orton, who went on a message board to respond to Kennedy. Orton would state that Kennedy did indeed drop him on his head, and that he did indeed go to WWE management to complain. A lot of fans jumped to Kennedy's defense when Orton mm -hmm. decided to leave yet another message on the message board involving Kennedy's wife. Orton would state, I honestly hope for his wife's sake that he can find something else he's marginally good at and earn a living. Whew. I know he really wants to entertain, so good luck Ken, you're gonna need it. According to Kennedy, Damn. it wasn't just Orton who complained. WWE's top star John Cena also went to WWE management to side with Orton. The sooner he's out of a job, the better. Damn, man. Uh, yeah, bro. That whole Kennedy situation was definitely nasty. This would ultimately leave Vince no choice but to release Kennedy from his WWE contract. Number two, Brad Maddox. Brad Maddox is most well known him. to WWE fans for his time spent serving as the general manager yep. of Raw between 2013 and 14. 
Following his rather forgettable stint as the authority figure of WWE's premiere show, Maddox would return to the ring, mainly working dark and live event matches. However, in November 2015, Maddox would be immediately fired from WWE <clears throat> after he referred to the crowd as cocky pricks during a pre-match promo for a dark match. Due to WWE being a PG presentation, Vince reportedly hated the promo and made the decision to immediately wow. fire him. Wow. Now we're out of my ring. A lot of fans called Vince out as just a few months later he would drop an F-bomb live on television. Hmm. Fans believed it was incredibly hypocritical for Vince to fire someone for cursing at a show, then doing the exact same thing himself just a short time. Yeah, <laughs> that's one of those things where it's like the power of owning <laughs> your brand. It's like, yeah, I may not want you to do it, but I can do it because I own this motherfucker. So it's like, damn, Vince, all right, hypocrite much? I'm afterwards. <clears throat> and number one, The Ultimate Warrior. Hmm. The Ultimate Warrior was without a doubt one of the WWE's like biggest stars. <laughs> He's chasing him down with the steel chair. I love that. Ever. Come here. However, he was notoriously difficult to deal with, and his behavior in relation to his match at 1991 SummerSlam pay-per-view is a clear indication of this. What was that? One month before SummerSlam, a Warrior would write a letter to Vince threatening to no-show the pay-per-view unless he was paid over half a million dollars that was apparently owed to him. This left Vince in a difficult position as Warrior was supposed to be in the main event of the show, so Vince had no choice but to pay him the hefty sum. Vince apparently informed Hogan of Warrior's threat and Hogan actually suggested they resolve things in a physical manner, but Vince refused this approach and stated that there was no other way than Warrior's way. Vince would ultimately get the last laugh though, as immediately after Warrior came through the curtain at SummerSlam, he would be fired. In the official letter that Vince Damn. would hand to the Warrior, it would state that you threatened to stay at home, thereby not even appearing at Titan's major summer pay-per-view event, SummerSlam. I had no choice but to accede to your exorbitant demands. This was a serious mistake on your part. But there you have it, folks. Wow. Six WWE wrestlers who were- So he got <laughs> that money. He got the money, but then afterwards, yeah, you're out of here. Fuck out of here. I had to pay you money to extra money. Yeah, you're out of here, man. So, yeah, man. Uh, this was crazy. Uh, when it comes to Vince McMahon and, and what he wants in his ring and how he wants it done, you know, uh, that's that's just really what it is. And and if you have some pull in WWE, which we've seen sometimes, if you got some pull, you're a major player, you can complain to management like, yo, man. I don't know about this guy. You may have to get him out of here. And nine times out of ten, if it's you know, if they really value your opinion, they'll they'll act upon it. So it that's what they call politicking right there. So, but comment down below. Let me know which of which one of these uh, wrestlers did you not know got released immediately after a match. Let me know. Uh, I didn't know that Kurt Angle wanted to be released. After his match, I I didn't even know that. You know, I, I never really dived into the situation of why Kurt had left originally, but that was interesting to know. So appreciate all the love and support. Road to 50K. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. And I see y'all on the next one. Peace.